Hey, good morning. So um, I have a feeling that m many of my future posts are going to be personally related. Uh, not that I don't typically have personally related posts, but um, what's happening in my life right now is just too good not to share. So most of you know, and maybe some of you don't know, that I've recently entered into a relationship. Uh, I met this person a month ago. Um, we uh, it's a long distance relationship and it wasn't it wasn't planned that way it just happened that way um and and we have now we we saw her twice when i was in chicago that was there for a wedding and she came out here and we spent four days together and we've <laughs> every night on uh, we talk about it seems like five hours a day on the phone um a couple hours in the morning an hour in the afternoon a couple hours at night uh, for the last four days, five days. And why I'm sharing this with you is because I'm, I'm, we, we spend a lot, we have spent a lot of time processing our past with each other. We've really processed a lot of the stuff that brought us to where we are today. And while I'm not always an advocate for that, when you're with a person who's an emotional grown up, who is capable of communicating their feelings in a vulnerable, authentic way, I think it's absolutely possible to have deeper, richer conversations. What I'm noticing is something that I don't think I ever felt before in any of my dating experiences or any of my, my previous relationships, which includes my marriage and my most significant relationship uh, after my marriage. And it's fascinating to me because it just, it, I mean, I can't believe it's taken me this long, 50 plus years of my life, to recognize this one primary con ingredient when you're with the right person, when you're, when you're feeling love with somebody. And it amazes me because now that I'm feeling, I'm like, oh my God, it makes so much sense. Like this particular feeling of all the feelings you you know whether it's passion excitement joy uh adventure um, um sensitivity care kindness generosity all of these feelings are great feelings to have and yet when you're with a person and i suspect when you're with the right person this one particular feeling stands out to me above the rest and that is I feel calm. It feels calm. And I believe that comes from feeling a sense of trust. Like I, I, I genuinely trust this person. Do I, you know, do I fully trust this person? No, not yet. I mean, I don't fully trust it. It, it takes a good hundred hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the real first layer of trust. I mean, I'm talking about a real plateau of trust. But I'm feeling that sense of trust. And with that trust, this byproduct of calmness. And where, what calmness means is safety. Like I feel safe with this person to open up my heart. I feel safe with this person to be expressive. I feel safe enough to even share my insecurities. And I don't feel judged, nor do I judge her. This is the most important ingredient. So in the early stage of dating, when I think of my past relationships, many of them, I felt like I was walking on eggshells. I mean, I really felt like I was walking on, you know, not so much in my marriage. My marriage, I was just so unconscious, but I, I was a little bit on, my, on eggshells, but certainly my significant relationship after my marriage, I walked on eggshells. I was so afraid if I spoke my truth, she'd break up with me. If I did this, she would end the relationship. If I said this, I wouldn't have sex tonight. I mean, like literally, I was constantly feeling like I was on eggshells. And that's on me. That's not her responsibility. That was my responsibility to navigate that, to speak my truth. And, and knowing that if I spoke my truth, that it might end the relationship and that's okay because as I say in my book, chapter nine, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. This person, I've shared some real personal stuff that would make 99.9% .9 of women run maybe. 
or maybe not that many, but let's say 97%. I don't know. She doesn't judge me. She's actually curious. We're actually curious about each other. And so while we've shared a lot of our past, which could trigger us, it's building safety, it's building trust, it's building that sense of calmness. And that's why this feels so different to me. I just feel calm. It's funny because we, we, we now are getting into what I'm noticing, the mundane. We're on the phone while we're doing other stuff, you know? Like, like I, I realize with, you know, every relationship has the mundane things, right? The mundane things, even when you're together, right? Uh, or when you live near each other, there's always the mundane. So we now are incorporate mundane in our on our on our conversations. Not incorporating, but we're just like we're on the phone, and I'm doing this, she's doing that, and we just are together, and it feels good. And for a person who talks on the phone all day long, I thought the last thing I wanted to do is be on the phone. I find myself two, three, four, five hours a day on the phone with her, a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, thankfully, we both have lifestyles that allow for that. And yet, even the mundane feels good. It really does. I mean, it's amazing. It doesn't, this, this, if you've ever, have you ever experienced in the early stage of dating or in a relationship feeling like you're walking on eggshells? Have you ever felt that you couldn't speak your truth? If that's what's happening, then it's probably not the right relationship. And it requires radical honesty to get there. How we got here, I believe, is through radical honesty, by being vulnerable, by being authentic, by being transparent with one another. And look, most of the time that's not going to work. It's not. And sometimes people do just naturally fall in love because they're just the right fit for each other. And yet when they're the right fit, it's because it's calm. They feel safe. There's a sense of trust. And I believe today we need radical honesty. We need a sense of intentionality. We need a sense of going on beyond the surface to get to that level of true intimacy. Into me you see. And I shared this publicly, and I'm going to share this. What we did on when she came to visit me was we literally sat face to face for 10 hours straight, bearing our soul. It wasn't the lust. It wasn't limerence. I mean, believe me, we have sexual chemistry with one another. Yahoo! I'm excited. But more importantly, and, and I'm certainly, I'm not, I'm infatuated with her, but not in an obsessive way, not in this, you know, way that feels uncomfortable, that feels an anxiety-based. We're attracted to each other, we like each other, and more importantly, we're this intimacy that's being built by, by literally 30 hours over a three-day period of just face-to-face -face bearing our souls. It was, like a, it was like taking the rocket ship fuel that got us into orbit, and now you're in orbit and it just feels good. So what's the lesson on all this, folks? Today, we live in a dysfunctional world today. Not that we haven't always lived in a dysfunctional world, but because of our devices, we have become rather dysfunctional human beings, and it's time to like, put the devices away and connect with somebody at a heart-centered level. And the way to do that is to express your feelings, to express your fears, to express your uncertainties, to express your joys, to be expressive, and allow the opportunity for the other person to meet you. And if they're unable to meet you, then you're most likely not going to build that deeper root of trust through radical honesty that allows you to feel safe and more importantly, allows you to feel calm. And I love this feeling of calm. It just feels great. All right, I think you get the gist of where I'm going. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. Listen, if you are happy with our group, if you feel like this provides value, please send your friends to my website, jonathanaslay.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.